17 Food Safety Facts That You Should Know. Stop right there! It's us, the Food Safety Police! Quick, how long does it take for bacteria to start multiplying on a melon? Well, that's what we thought. That's it. You're coming with us. For the crime of being ignorant in the area of food safety, your punishment will be to watch this video. But first, before we begin this video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more daily tips like this and turn on notifications so you never miss our new videos because it's also the only way you'll get out of food safety jail. All right, let's get into it. Eating food can be difficult. That sounds like a silly thing to say, but it's true. Sometimes the food we buy goes off the moment it sits in a hot car too long and we don't even know it. Other times the food was off in the store. And how are you supposed to know if your milk has gone bad when there's a seal on it? When you're a kid, this is less worrisome because at least you have your parents looking out for you. But when you're an adult, you have to look out for yourself. Have you ever looked in your compost bin after weeks of not taking it out because you were too lazy? Yeah, it gets nasty. All of that was food you planned on eating once. If you're anything like us, then these food safety tips given by the USDA and other food inspection organizations will help you steer clear of food poisoning in the future when you forget what temperature your fridge should always be at. And if you already know all of these, well, it never hurts to refresh your memory anyway. Number one, refrigeration. Always refrigerate your perishable items within two hours. It goes down to one hour when the temperature outside is above 90 degrees Fahrenheit, 32.2 degrees Celsius. Number two, more fridge stuff. Be sure to check the actual temperature of your fridge with an appliance thermometer. Your fridge could be broken and you don't even know it. Always ensure your fridge is at 40 degrees Fahrenheit, 4.4 degrees Celsius, or below. Your freezer should always be at zero degrees Fahrenheit or minus 17.7 degrees Celsius. Number three, fresh meat. When you eat fresh meat, poultry, fish, ground meat, or variety, and keep it in the fridge, make sure you cook it within two days or put it in the freezer if you still haven't cooked it after the second day. This extends from three to five days for sliced beef, veal, lamb, or pork. Number four, canned foods. Discard any of your canned foods that have dense or swollen containers. These are usually good indefinitely, but can go bad if exposed to freezing temperatures or temperatures above 90 degrees Fahrenheit. A good rule, if the cans look okay, they're safe to use. Number five, Room temperature. Always discard any food that has been left out at room temperature for more than two hours. This changes to one hour if the temperature was above 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Also, make sure to use all cooked leftovers within four days and always reheat your leftovers to 165 degrees Fahrenheit or 73.9 degrees Celsius. Number six, frozen eggs. If you want to freeze your eggs, crack them first, then freeze. Freshly cracked eggs will only last two to four days in your fridge, but they will last up to a year in your freezer. Hard cooked eggs don't freeze well, so don't bother. Number seven, frozen dinners. If you're into frozen dinners, you can keep those in your freezer up to three to four months. Do not keep them in the fridge. They aren't meant to be there and they will harbor bacteria. Number eight, chocolate. Ever seen that white film on chocolate? Yeah, apparently that's not too big of an issue. It just means that fat has deposited on the front of the chocolate bar. But considering we all know how fattening chocolate already is, that's not too much of a deterrent. Number nine, melons. Let's talk about food safety in relation to melons for a second. Did you know that it takes four hours for bacteria on melons to start multiplying? So if you're enjoying the aforementioned melon in the hot summer sun, 
make sure to eat it all up before four hours goes by. Who are we kidding? We didn't have to tell you that, did we? Number 10, freezing. We've talked a lot about freezing stuff in this video, so we should probably give you the most important piece of information about the practice. Keep this in mind when you stick food in the freezer. Freezing only stops the growth of bacteria, but it doesn't kill it. What does kill bacteria completely? Well, that would be cooking your food. Number 11, turkey. This is for all the people who celebrate Thanksgiving, or maybe just everyone who enjoys some of that delectable big bird from time to time. When you're done basting and seasoning your turkey and leave it be, keep this in mind. It is harmful for a raw turkey to be kept non-refrigerated for more than 45 minutes. So either stick that baby in the fridge or slide it in the oven. We recommend the oven so that you can eat it quicker. Number 12, fruits and veggies. Next, we learn about some food safety when it comes to everyone's favorite food group, fruits and vegetables. Here's a great tip for all those chefs out there who like to make a meal that doesn't come out of a cardboard, microwavable box. It is wrong to place your fruits and vegetables in the same bag with meats. It could lead to contamination. We understand the vegetables part. Green peppers and onions go great with, well, just about everything. But what kind of sicko do you have to be to mix perfectly good meat with fruits? Maybe apples and ham, but still, gross. Number 13, leftovers. Sometimes leftovers can be awesome. Sometimes they can stink. It really depends on the chef, your fridge, and where you've put them. But keep this in mind, leftovers that have remained in the refrigerator should be recooked after more than 36 hours. Even if it's that cold pizza you had on Friday, if you're eating it midday Sunday, toss it in the microwave. Your stomach will thank you. Number 14, barbecue. So you're out in the sun, enjoying your hopefully bacteria-free melon, and you decide to have a barbecue. Why not? It's a beautiful day out. There's never been a better excuse to slap some meat on the old barbecue and make some nice, smoky food. Well, make sure you're careful about where you're putting that meat. Apparently, placing barbecued meats on the same plate that held the raw meat after it has been cooked leads to food poisoning. So, you know, make sure to get two different plates. Wouldn't want your guests to get sick. Number 15, cans or jars. Say you're out of plates because you used them all up at the barbecue and you want to eat some alphagetti. In the very least, eat them out of something that isn't the can. Eating foods directly from a jar or can causes saliva to contaminate the contents. And as good as alphagetti is, it isn't worth getting sick over. Or is it? Number 16, can openers. All right, so now that you've found a bowl for your alphagetti, it's time to open up that sucker and pour it into your alphagetti receptacle. Just find a can opener, stick it into the top, and wait a minute. You forgot to rinse off that can opener. But bestie food safety police, we hear you whine. That's like one whole other thing we have to do. Plus, what's wrong with a dirty can opener? A lot, actually. Unwashed can openers are one of the most common causes of food poisoning due to contamination from food left behind. So yeah, turns out that not washing your can opener is kind of a big deal. You're welcome, by the way. We just saved your stomach from a night of torture. Number 17, mold. This food safety tip might seem obvious, but mold is pretty bad, so there are a couple of them that bear repeating. So here we go, a quick bestie food safety guide about mold. Touching or eating a moldy food can trigger allergic reactions. So remember, don't keep moldy food around. Also, moldy vegetables like tomatoes, cucumbers, and lettuce are meant to be thrown out. They can cause health issues if eaten. So, once again, don't keep moldy food around. 
You'd think you wouldn't in the first place, considering how gross moldy food can be. Then again, you never know. And that's it. Well, XCon, we hoped you learned your lesson about food safety. We hope that you learned a thing or two. Well, we guess you can go nah. Quick, how long does it take for bacteria to multiply on a melon? Leave your answer in the comments section below, and if you got it wrong, you'll have to watch the video again. Enjoyed this video? Hit the like button and share with your friends. Also, subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.